Here we go. I'm I'm so excited to see how Ida responds to this. He got that challenge from Todoroki last episode. I feel like there's there's so much good he could do here if he just turns it around a little bit. Climax. Yeah, yeah. It feels like something really big is brewing. He's a super popular pro with 65 sidekicks working alongside him at his Tokyo agency. He's my elder brother. The days of innocence for Ida. I strive to be just like him. But it's way harder in real life. Stand up and be ingenium! God, it's just there's something so beautiful about this from Todoroki. Can I call myself a hero? My friends are protecting me. They're bleeding for me. Why has it got to be so touching? The episode just started. <laughs> what the hell? I don't know. It hits me especially strongly just because it adds a lot to it to see this like bright-eyed, naive version of younger Ida, season one Ida, with just the best of intentions, you know, like heart completely in the right place, but just not yet understanding the, the difficulties of maintaining those beliefs in light of like how crazy the world is, you know? And to me, that's so relatable. I go through this all the time where I, I like decide I'm going to like challenge myself and take something new on. And it all works out so well in my head. But then like you take any step towards it and the game completely changes. It's sort of like going to the beach and taking that first step into the ocean and realizing the ocean's cold as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but way worse. <laughs> and it's especially tough if you think about yourself in a certain way. Like, you know, you think about yourself as a certain category of person. To fail to live up to that is excruciating. And it's even worse if you feel like you've done something wrong. Like, to do something horrible, to do something borderline villainous, like, Stain's not totally wrong about Ida here. It feels like you've damaged the most precious thing that you have, which is your reputation with yourself, you know? But from within that, I think there's something useful and something of beauty, which is just the idea that you're never any one thing. And you wouldn't necessarily even want to just be a certain state by default. There's something hollow about that. It has to be earned. Like, in order to be a hero, you have to do things that are heroic, which probably means great difficulty. And to be born that way, just to have that as an intrin intrinsic state might even rob us of that realization, you know, that self-realization. And the good news about that, I think, is that it's something that exists moment to moment. So like right now, Ida could answer Todoroki's challenge and stand up and it would be amazing. And the wrong he's done would still be wrong, although he hasn't really done anything. His turning it around would just make that part of the journey. And to me, that's just what it takes. You know, like that's what big endeavors take. It's not that these great traits are just like intrinsic qualities of our being. They're things that we we earn moment to moment. And to me, that makes them more special, more meaningful. It also keeps us vigilant because it's as soon as you think you can do no wrong, you know, or amazing that you start to do all sorts of wrong, if that makes sense. You get blindsided by your own like inner darkness. <laughs> Shouldn't you be worried about saving that guy? Right, I guess that's the difference between Ida and the other two when they arrived on the scene. What drives you? Why did you choose to become a pro hero in the first place? <laughs> this should be good. An answer from the ultimate man. Everyone kind of expected I would be one too, staying in the family business and all that. Plus, it made sense to me. There we go. That's more I think important. <laughs> the coolest people in the world are those who do things for others. Ultimate man. <laughs> it feels great to finally be able to fanboy over someone who isn't blonde. <laughs> that was a weird streak I was on there for a while. You're a hard worker and definitely smarter and more athletic than me back when I was a kid. And giving of praise. That's my secret. Knowing you look up to me makes me better. I have to be sure I make Stop. you proud. <laughs> <laughs> Stop pulling at my heartstrings. You spoke the truth, hero killer. What's your right? These two are different from me. They're not that different. But still. Yeah, there you go. That but still is important. Right now, that's true. But we all know that Ida has the same stuff, right? Like, he's not really qualitatively different in terms of his motivations. Also, I feel like in some ways this was a bigger test for him. Like, his brother was the one who got injured. Undoubtedly, I mean, I don't know about the show, but just, you know, treating this as if it were real life. And probably in the show too. Todoroki and Midoriya are, are gonna have their struggles still, and Ida will have moments where he can return the favor. So I feel like the, the North Star is the important thing, you know, not the individual failures. It's just seeing it as a process. Everybody, no matter how great they are, no matter how good their goals are, is gonna be hit from their blind spots and like collapse. And then the question is like, well, what do you do from there? It's not a matter of just being perfect, you know? It's a matter of having perspective on what the ultimate goal is and also taking responsibility for those things for these moments when things go wrong or don't match the you know the mental image we have of ourselves and so right here Ida I feel like is doing it he's thinking about it he's actually agreeing with Stain you know like how hard is that how hard is it to admit one's own mistakes and failings but so be it you know it happened and here we are and you just start with what's in front of you and that is getting up and doing something better making a better choice and of course Todoroki and Midoriya and like pretty much everyone else in the class will understand what happened with Ida they will forgive him this lapse because their North Star is also Decent, you know? Just try and dodge this villain. Hasn't anyone 
never told you you rely on your quirk too much? Interesting. We've heard this from Gran Torino too. He's a monster. Oh my. Oh. Totoroki! Oh my. Uh, but you know who would be useful right now? Somebody with a lot of speed. <laughs> just, uh, just a feeling that I have. I'll never live up to my brother's name. You gotta live up to your own name. Listen, bro! That was so amazing, my, my computer couldn't handle it. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thanks, computer. Shall we watch that again? Can we do slow motion? Since we're, like, messing around here. Nice. Everything is okay now. All mistakes forgotten. <laughs> and Ida still gets to kick his ass, <laughs> but in a slightly healthier and more heroic way. We love you, Ida. Guess his quirk isn't as great as I thought it was. Especially with like some of the three most powerful students at UA. I apologize. Come on. Not We're past that. Again. Yeah. I'm okay. Good. But I won't let the two of you shed any more blood for me. You can work together. Person's true nature doesn't change in just a few minutes. Ah, interesting. Thane is a very a kind of binary black You're and white. A fundamentalist lunatic. Yeah, yeah. He's completely correct. I have no right to call myself a hero at all. Oh no. Even so, there's no way I can back down. Stop fighting back! Just get out of here! I don't think he'd let me run even if I wanted to. And these kids are too too heroic to just leave this guy, this unnamed hero. The issue of blood type makes it unpredictable and it doesn't last long. Plus he has to get in close to Okay, Midoriya. <laughs> Can you regulate your temperatures? Not well with my left, but yes I can. You gotta freeze my leg for me, without plugging the exhaust! There you go. It's more important that you work together. My leg's no good, but that's okay! <laughs> yeah, I mean like, at this point, breaking your limbs and toes is just part of the plan, part of the strategy. <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> oh my god. So satisfying. Both of the missing limbs. Pretty good climax, I'll say. <laughs> Almost brings a, a tear to the eye. Going back to what Stain said, that is a very interesting thing I, I feel like comes up. You know, like, he's sort of on the opposite end of what I was saying earlier about how, like, you, you know, you give people the chance to adapt and change. And it's about what you do in the moment. And it's about, like, your guiding principles and, you know, what is your North Star, as I said. And you give people the chance to hit lows and then climb out of them. That's just part of like the growth of a human being. <laughs> and interestingly, I think one reason to reject that sort of nuanced way of looking at people is because of an attachment to hate, not to principles. If Stain truly wanted heroism, if that really was what he was after, then that would be a good thing. Maybe part of him really feels that way, but he also enjoys what he's doing. He enjoys the justification for killing. He enjoys feeding his own hatred. So in that way, he seems hypocritical. I've thought about this before. You know, I've noticed that sometimes people don't want their enemies to agree with them. Does that sound crazy? Signs of compassion, signs of goodness, signs of humanity from the enemy are met with explanations about why it's a trick or why it's actually terrible. You know, there is a lot of mental gymnastics that goes into removing nuance and humanity in others once they have been decided as being like in an opposite group, you know, an opposite camp. But the truth is almost always going to be way more complicated than that. And if the goal is actually something good and something pure, then humanity and compassion and goodness in others is is optimal. So why is it that we do work to keep people in those boxes? Especially when we want other people to allow us to make mistakes and to see the nuance in our own characters, you know what I mean? I think there is something at play that's like an attachment to the feeling of righteousness. It can be tough to separate, but there's the desired goal itself. And then there's a good feeling that we get from believing ourselves to be champions of that goal. And it can be tough to tease out which is which, but I think not wanting the other side to be able to change or not allowing them to have any humanity at all suggests that it's more of like the personal attachment to an identity. Minutes earlier. Oh yeah, there's like a whole city being destroyed. <laughs> totally forgot about that in, in, uh, in light of all this great UA student action. Oh yeah, Endeavor showed up. Plus one point for Endeavor on the scale of goodness. He's now at a negative 999. <laughs> Something's not right. This guy is... Wouldn't really call him a, a guy. More like a pigeon. Good. Endeavor and Gran Torino. Interesting pairing. They have done this subtly, and I know they're probably going to do it a lot more, but I'm very interested in, like, the, the workings of the hero world and their inner personal dynamics. They all have to have thoughts about each other. That's just, like, what colleagues are, right? Like, 
Colleagues are always like weighing and measuring each other's abilities. I bet there's the equivalent of superhero office drama, but it doesn't matter in light of this event, right? Nice. I love how, how calm Endeavor's standing as he fights. All he sent was his location. You should be watching me! Hey, wait! Where the hell are you going? An alleyway at 4210 Echo Street. If you finish what you're doing or see extra pros, send them there. I'm leaving you here to take care of this trouble. I'm sure you can handle it yourself. It's amazing he was able to say all that so calmly while running away. Shoto. Was that... respect? Interesting. There's an address that I need you to investigate for me. Okay, all right. Plus a couple more points. Maybe we're at a negative 950. <laughs> Crap, did I use too much power? Yeah, go ahead and use it all on stage. <laughs> I will defeat you, Stay, because you are a criminal! We will defeat you, Ida. We will defeat you. <laughs> Come on. And I am a hero! Well, you have it in you, that's for sure. Alright, now, you know, rein it in somewhat. These ice ramps are turning out to be really useful. We got him. And we should probably take all his weapons, too. Good idea. Yeah, a lot happened very quickly. It's a lot to think about. Watch out! Hey! Looking pretty badass. I love how they they are doing this with Endeavor. They set him up to be the absolute worst, but it adds a lot to him seeing him in action, seeing him actually be heroic. Speaking of nuance, right? Let's see you come back from this. I mean, he is the number two hero, right? Any hero whose quirk isn't suited for this, go help on Echo Street in District 4. Another villain? I don't know. Just do it! <laughs> Awesome hero moments for Endeavor. It's amazing how far capability will carry you, you know, as a, as a character. And I want to believe as a person, right? That's like a, a reassuring thing, I think, for me. There seems to always be a path for us to carve things for ourselves just by doing things really well. You know, striving to be better, striving to do things that are useful. That, I think, is, is a nice thought. And I don't think I'm making that up. I think that's why that feeling is so clear. Like, why a character can come in and do something amazing and it can totally have you look at them differently. I think we're just wired to really love and adore people who come through in the clutch and do things that are difficult, especially when related to things that we fear. Native. It's a lot of weapons. Can you move? Yeah. I think I'm good as new now. Native. You sure? I saw you hurt your leg back there. At least let me do this for you. Thank you very much. I should be thanking you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing here, boy? Gran Torino! Um, not much, just I saving you everyone. Stay on the bullet train. Jeez, this side of him reminds me so much of Toshinori. Yeah, they have a lot in common. Dangerously so. Giving to a fault. I was just so angry. I couldn't see anything else. I'm sorry too, Ida. What are you sorry for? I couldn't tell anything was wrong. Even though I'm your friend. <laughs> hey, pull yourself together. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Todoroki. Get down! There's more? What just what? If it takes him too high, I won't be able to reach him. I am here. <gasps> no! What the hell? The word hero has lost all meaning in this society. Oh what? The state the is helping? Is overrun by fakes and criminals so like much is happening right now. <laughs> Interesting. Everything that I do. <laughs> Is to create a stronger society. <laughs> oh man, Stain's sort of a mess. If this is his thing, wouldn't he be more willing to go after villains than heroes? Is he gonna get away again? I feel like there's a lot of potential here because we're just building villains gradually. I wonder if at one point there'll be like some sort of league of villains. <laughs> Although the name is already taken, unfortunately. Did he just save that kid? He took him hostage. He, he did. He killed that guy with no hesitation. Everyone be on your guard! We've got a fight on our hands! Wouldn't call it a guy. Are standing around like fools? More like a sparrow. You false hero! Is his path related to Endeavor? Is that where it begins, maybe? I will reclaim that word! Come on! What happened to Stain, I wonder? Try and stop me, you fakes! All Might is worthy! Where is All Might? <laughs> He is not here. What is this insane power-up? 
This is bloodbending improving with the power of the moon. A quirk didn't stop the hero killer. One of his broken ribs pierced his lung. Oh. None of us could bring ourselves to stand against him. Only the hero killer had any fight left. Huh. Wait, did he die? It was very unclear. <laughs> so much for like a league of villains accumulating. Well, I guess he, he died with his beliefs intact. His stupid, stupid beliefs. <laughs> Conviction is not limited to people who are right, I guess. I mean, anyone can have conviction about anything. We'll often confuse the two. Like, we'll take conviction for, you know, being correct. They're correlated, but wires can get crossed, you know? We mistake the conviction for the, you know, the truth. And sometimes being reasonable makes you pause, you know, because you're thinking about what you don't understand yet. But it's such an incredible episode, such an incredible two episodes. I just love the Ida journey and how it was sort of brought to a head by, by Todoroki, who's going through something similar, in a way. And Midoriya, of course. The plan is working very well so far, having the tournament first, having us, you know, get to love them, having them go through their sort of independent journeys, then putting them against this sort of ultimate villain. In terms of their, their level now, Stain was a very good match. He also served as the perfect way to highlight the darkness Ida was experiencing and a pitfall for him. Stain, villain as he is, was looking for something like purity of motivation, purity of goal, and Ida actually was not that and so it's interesting having the villain sort of have an insight about Ida. And from there you have this clash of ideas about like the nature of a person where Stain sees people as just like flat things that just are this or that. And then you have the more, in my opinion, heroic take of Todoroki Midoriya of like, you're in a dark place, stand up, you know, like get out of it. And to me, that is a heroic notion. The notion that you give people chances and that we're complicated and that part of rising up means going through difficulty, which means falling, you know, which means challenge. So I'd say these two episodes were some of my, my favorite of the show so far and of the season. But that was the climax, right? So this arc seems to have, you know, reached some kind of conclusion. And we still got a whole lot of season left, so I'm very excited to see where this goes.